Each report has different users, and that means different needs and different KPIs that they might want to see on the report. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how to show the right KPIs to the right people automatically without them having to click around. So that means if person A logs in, they might want to see these KPIs, but if person B logs in, they might want to see something completely different. Now, let's see how you can set it up. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's see how we can build this example over here, where we have the KPI cards showing at the top, and then right below it we have a line chart also showing the relevant KPIs over time. And in the top right corner you see who is looking at the report. Now, if I switch to a different person, now we switch to the user Olivia Davidson, and she sees completely different KPIs. Now, this can be set up automatically depending on who is looking at this report. Now, let's start at the beginning. And here we have two placeholders for our visualizations. At the top, we have a new card visual, which only got introduced in June 23. And here at the bottom, there we have a line chart. All right. Now, our first step is going to be to create a field parameter. Now, to do that, we go here to the top to modeling, then new parameter, and from here we can choose a field parameter. Now, let's change the name of this parameter to KPIs, and now we can pick and choose the KPIs that we want to add to this field parameter, so the KPIs that I want to switch between later on. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect yet because we're going to make changes to this anyways, but let's say we want to have, first of all, the catalog sales, the online sales, reseller sales, store sales, and then over here we have also the sales measures, but then for each individual category, all right? And the slicer, I don't need. Okay, now and let's click on create. And you see on the right hand side, a new table popping up, KPIs, and inside of the table, there is one column visible at the moment, KPIs. And here in the formula bar, we have the formula that returns that table. Now, if we switch to the modeling view, then you see over here we have the KPIs table, which is disconnected from all of the other tables. Now, then in the data view, you see we have actually two columns that are hidden, KPI fields with the structured reference, and over here also the KPIs order, which is then the order in which they show when we would add the KPIs, for example, to a slicer. All right, now let's use that fields parameter in the visualization. So let's go back to the report view. Now let's take the KPIs parameter and drag it onto the new card visual. And it gives us an overview of all of the measures that we added to that parameter. Now we can do the same for the line chart here at the bottom. I want to have, first of all, from dim date, a breakdown by year and month. So I put that on the X axis. And then we can take the KPIs parameter and drag it onto the Y axis. Okay, now at the moment it looks a little bit overwhelming, too many lines. However, that's going to change very soon because now it's time for the next step. Now we're going to create categories to which we assign our KPIs. Now, this we can do also in the parameters table. However, we have to do this manually. So we can go over here to the KPIs parameter. This opens up the formula bar that generates that fields parameter table. And over here, we're going to add a new column. Now let's shift everything one line down with shift enter. All right. And then here we can add a fourth column just by adding values here at the end. So we enter a comma before the closing bracket. And here we are going to create the first group of KPIs. So I put in a one and we repeat that for all of the other measures. So over here, the next one, I also want to be in group one and then the next one as well. And the next one as well. Now, over here we have basically the measures that return the sales for different sales channels. And then the last three, those are the sales for different categories. Okay, so I'm going to assign those to group two. All right. Now, once I have done this, you will see there's a new column if we go to the table for that fields parameter. So let's switch to the data view. Now here you see that new column popping up. And this one we can rename. This is going to be my KPI group ID. So now that we have this column, we can go back to the report view. And here we could insert a new slicer. Let's place it here in the top right corner. Let's resize it and let's place that KPI group ID on the slicer. So I'm going to drag and drop it onto the slicer. Let's now also go to the formatting options, slicer settings, and change the style to maybe a tile. Okay, now if I click here on one, we see the KPIs for group one. 
if I click here on 2, I see the KPIs for KPI group 2. Okay, however, this is not exactly what I had in mind because the user would still have to manually click on the KPI group that they want to see. Now, the question is, how can we set it up in such a way that we don't need that slicer and it automatically picks up the KPI group for that employee? So we are going to assign the employees to different KPI groups later. Okay, but before we do that, let's first see how we can, well, set this up without the slicer. Okay, so I'm going to add over here to the KPIs parameter, a uh, measure, all right? And this measure is basically going to choose the right KPI group. Now let's call this measure KPI filter. And here we can use an if function to check if the selected value of the KPI group ID. So the selected value function only returns the KPI group ID when there's only one to display. And if this is equal to one, then we want to return one. Otherwise, we want to return a zero. Okay, so this if function needs to check the KPI group ID for each measure. And only for those measures where the KPI group ID is one, I want to return one. For the other ones, I want to return zero. And this measure we're going to use as a filter. Now what is important is that this gets evaluated for each KPI that we have in the parameter table. Now let's see how we can do that. First of all, I'm going to get rid of that slicer again. So let's take the slicer, press delete. All right, then I take the card visual. Now if I would simply take that KPI filter measure and drag it here onto the filter section, for this visual, well, I cannot make any changes here. I cannot use it as a filter because the KPI filter measure needs to be evaluated for each row in the parameter table. Now, how could we achieve that? Well, there's a little trick. I can just take the KPIs column, right, in the parameter table. I'm going to add it onto the filter section for this visual. Let me just drag it to the top, okay. And then, to go row by row, we can use a top and filter. Now, what do I want to have? I want to evaluate each row with that KPI filter measure, okay? And I only want to have those with a one. So I'm going to say over here, I want to have the top one. So only those that have a one with the KPI filter measure, only those measures I keep. Okay, now let's apply the filter and ta-da, we have our filter in place. And now we only see those measures of group one. Now let's test it then also for the other group. So I'm going to take the KPI filter measure, open up the formula bar, and here I change the one to two. Okay, and now it should show me the other three measures. And there you go, works beautifully. However, it's still not completely automatic because there's no link between this measure and the user that's looking at the report. And that's the next thing that we need to solve, step three. Now, before we're going to do that, let's also apply the same logic to the line chart here at the bottom. So I'm going to select the line chart, I'm going to add the KPIs column over here to the filter section of that visual. Let's put it here at the top. And over here, I want to change it from basic filtering to top M. Then we want to have the top one on the basis of the KPI filter. And that's it. Let's click here on apply. And you see also here we have now just these three measures showing up. And let's make it also a little bit more realistic by adding further KPI groups to the parameter table. So let's select the KPIs parameter. I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to replace this with something that I already set up before in a different example. So I'm just going to copy that over. And you see we have here four KPI groups, more measures that I want to be able to switch between. So here we have KPI group one, you see the number here at the end, one. And then we have KPI group two, KPI group three, KPI group four, okay? Now, now that we have this, let's see how our visualizations look like. Now, because group two has now different measures assigned, the KPIs that show are, again, a little bit different. Okay, so now the next part. We have to assign the users to KPI groups. And for that, well, we need to have an employee table. Now, that I've already done. Now, let me show you here in the data view. And then I take here my employees table. And you see, it's just a table where we have employee ID, name, role, and most importantly, at the end, here we have 
KPI group ID, so the KPI group that is assigned to that employee, and also important, here we have the email address of that employee, which we can use as an identifier for each employee. Now, a table like this, you can simply create an Excel, import, and that's it. So now that we have this table, we can go back to a measure where we have to first figure out who is looking at our report at the moment, then figure out what is the corresponding KPI group ID for that person, and then use that for a KPI filter so that we only show those KPIs that are relevant for that person. Okay, now let's do this step by step. I'm going to open here the KPI filter measure. Now, first of all, we have to figure out who is the user that's looking at the report. Now, for that, let's use variables. So over here, we have the variable KPI filter. Okay, so KPI filter, all right? That is what we already had before. And then right above it, we first need the user. Okay, so I'm going to create a variable called user. And the user you can figure out by the user principal name. And so normally uh, you would say, uh, say user principal name and that returns the email address of the person that's looking at the report when you publish the report to Power BI service. Okay, now for the time being, I'm just going to comment this out. All right, and I'm just going to hard code one of the users that we uh, have in the employee table. Okay, so here we have Liam Anderson at data training.io all right and that is then uh, the user that we are going to use to test it and then the second part this is where we can figure out the kpi group id for that person okay so uh, over here we have kpi uh, group id for the selected person and uh, so for the selected person um and this we can figure out with a calculate function now calculate function that's you well, put a filter on an expression or modify a filter. Now, over here, we want to find the KPI group ID from the KPIs table. We can do that with a max or min. Should not make a difference because we are only going to, well, have one role. Because here, the filter that we put in place is going to be on the employee table, email column, right? So here, we only want to have that role where the, where the email is equal to the user's email, uh, the user that's looking at the report. And that's only going to be one role. So max, min, uh, selected value would, would not make a difference, okay? So now that we have that second part, we have to update the third part. Now instead of hard coding here a two, we want to have, well, the KPI group ID of the selected person that's looking at the report, okay? So I only want to have uh, over here a one for, well, with a KPI group ID and the KPI table is equal to the KPI group ID that's for the selected user. Okay, and otherwise it's zero. Now, because we are using variables, we need a return statement. So we can say return and then KPI filter. Okay, and that's the whole measure. Now to check this, we first need to know, okay, Liam Anderson, uh, which KPI group uh, does this person have? Let's go here to employees table and let's double check. Liam, well, KPI group one. Okay, so if I now go to the report view, I should be seeing, well, not all of the measures. Something went wrong, so let me just double check here that measure. And over here, the problem is on line five. Here, I should be returning the KPI group ID. That's, that was correct. However, I'm referring here to KPI group ID from the wrong table. It should come from the employees table. Okay, so employee table, KPI group ID. Okay, now why? Because, well, we are filtering the employee table where the email address equals to the email address of the user that's looking at the report. And then on that corresponding row, we want to have the KPI group ID from the employees table, okay? So now that I change this, it should work. Now let's double check. And that looks better. Whew. All right, good. So now that we have this working, what's then the next step? Well, now we have to just double check it to see if it also still works for other people. And then we have to make the part of who is looking at the report dynamic instead of hard coding it. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to the KPI filter. And instead of Liam Anderson, I'm just going to switch to, well, a different person that is in the employee table. For example, Jackson Carter. All right. And let's see what it returns now. And the KPI is nicely updated. You see here we have the sales for the different sales channels. 
And if I double check this in the data view, you see over here we have Jackson Carter. This KPI group ID is two. And KPI uh, group ID two, if I go to the KPIs table, should be these lines over here. Total sales, catalog sales, online store sales, and reseller sales. And those are exactly at the metrics that show in the card visual, as well as over here in the line chart. Perfect. Now to make it a little bit more visible who's looking at the report, it might also be a good idea to uh, insert a visual like a multi-row card. Okay, put it maybe in the top right corner or the top left corner, wherever you want it. And then we can create a new measure. And this measure is going to be, well, containing the username. And also here, we can just type in user principal name. So and this is what the final version should contain, user principal name. However, that's not going to work for the time being because I would need to publish it to Power BI service. And um, if I take the user and drag it here onto the card visual, you see, uh, well, not my email address, right? So that's the problem. It only shows when it's published to Power BI service. So therefore, I'm just going to comment that out. And then over here, I'm just going to switch to Liam Anderson, again, at datatraining.io, put it in between quotation marks. And there you go. I'm just going to resize it. And then we have to go back to the KPI filter. Instead of hard coding it here, I'm just going to have a reference to that measure user. Okay, so at the moment, we pretend that Liam is looking at this report. And you see the measures that are relevant to Liam. Then somebody else would log in to the same report. Then what would happen is that here, this measure, well, the user principal name would return a different email address. So let's do that. For example, Olivia Davidson. And then Olivia only sees the measures of the KPI group that she was assigned to. All right, and that's the whole solution. Now, you might still want to make a few refinements. So for example, you might not want to show all of the KPIs here in the line chart, but you do want to show all of the KPIs here at the top. Now. To be able to do that, we could, again, add a new column to the parameters table that we then use as a filter for, well, the visualization. Now, let me do that. I'm going to go back over here once more to the data view, the KPIs parameter. And here we can, again, add another column where we return a one for those measures that we want to see in the other charts that are on the page. For example, over here, I want to see total sales for that first KPI group, but maybe not. Uh, total cost, then I would put in a zero. Okay, and I do that for all of them. Now let's do this quickly. And once you have that, then you will see a new column being added over there in the table. Now, we can also rename that column. I'm going to just call this one visual filter. Okay, so visual level filter. Okay, which is going to be the filter for, the, uh, in our case, the line chart. You see, we just have ones and zeros. So for KPI group one, we would only show total sales, not, nothing uh, from the other measures, okay? Now, then I go back to the report view, take over here the line chart, and then I'm going to take the visual level filter and add it also as a filter over here to the line chart. Now, let me drag it up a bit. And here we only want to return those measures where we have a one. So I'm going to click here on one, and you see our total sales disappeared. Now we just have to figure out, okay, Olivia Davidson is assigned to KPI group uh, two. All right, now KPI group two, let's go here to the KPIs table. And you see over here for KPI group two, we have a zero for total sales and we have a one there for the other ones. And that's exactly what happened. The total overall sales disappeared and we only have, well, catalog sales, online sales, store sales and reseller sales, so different uh, sales distribution channels. Okay, one more refinement for the line chart. Let's maybe also add a title. Now for that, I'm going to add another measure. And here I'm just going to copy over what I created before. And you see, I use the switch statement for this dynamic title to just check the KPI group data again, and then return either sales over time, channel sales over time, basically the definition of that KPI group. Okay, and this measure we can then use as the measure to dynamically return the title for the line chart. So I take the, the line chart, go to formatting, general title, and then here we have the FX button, field value, and here we can choose the new measure, dynamic title. There it is. Okay, let's click on OK. I see for Olivia Davidson, that would then be the KPI group channel sales. 
over time. All right, so that's it. This is how you can dynamically show the right measures to the right users on a report page. Now, let me know your thoughts, put your questions in the comment section below. And if you like this video, then check out these videos over here. Now, thank you, and see you in the next video.